Uh, if it didn't come up, I've seen it before not come right up. Instead, it comes up to a thing that says, you know, here's your, your password, as, as, if, as if it expects you to log in. If that happens to you, you don't want to put anything in email or password, but if you look down, if I can say log in with Google or log in with Gmail, if you just hit that, then it should go right in. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to start the video. And one of the first things to do, oops, so it's too, I'm not going to start the video because I haven't. Yeah. When you start the video, you don't have to do anything else. Like change the camera. Yes, we do. That's what I want to show you. This is the um, so everything's plugged into this USB hub now. Okay, what's this? Yeah, what's this, this one? it's got to go into. One, two, one, two.
Hose sing hallelujah. Sing we to our God of hallelujah. Praise eternal and his love. Hallelujah. Praise him all ye heavenly host. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Dr. Brown, can you and your choir go over it one more time so we can see how it's coming on Zoom? Okay, okay, that's good. Thanks, sir. Oh, let us know when you're ready. Okay, so you guys can go to Because He Lives. You should have that uh, uh, Because He Lives on the handout. So I'm in A flat on that particular one. I can Because he lives, God sent his son. They call him One, Jesus. Two. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. Because he lives, 
to hear you with this, uh, oh, victory in Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his glory, of his precious blood atoning. You guys have that? That's 97. How Jesus saved me from my sin and won the victory. Victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He 
sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me as I knew him, and all my love is to him. And he plants me to victory beneath the... Verse 3. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal shore. About the age of singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song. Victory, oh victory, oh victory, in Jesus, my Savior, forever. With his, with his, he loved me and me him, and all my love to him. He loves me to victory. The That's going to be uh, Cindy. Cindy, okay? Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him. And all my love is to him. He wants me to victory beneath the cliff. You can go to verse 1. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning. Of his precious blood atoning, how Jesus saved me from my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me and knew him. And all my love is to him. He plants me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, you have one of these. Okay, okay. <laughs> and. Uh, That's true. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Good morning. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd on this Resurrection Sunday. A couple of announcements before we begin. If you haven't been in the sanctuary uh, in a while, you will notice that there are some things that are going to be different, and that's okay. Uh, if you didn't take a small communion cup on the way in, then you need to have one. So before communion happens, raise your hand so that one of the ushers can bring one to you. We will do communion together. There will be no passing of the plate. There is an offering box at the back, and you can leave your offering as you leave. There will also be no passing of the peace. We can greet one another, but no touching, and please try to maintain physical distancing. I'm so glad to see all your faces here this morning. I cannot tell you how it warms my heart. So let us begin. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Paul writes, today Christ is risen, and we gather with astonishment and joy. Christ is risen, and we have been set free from the bonds of death. Christ is risen, and we are forgiven. Christ is risen indeed. And let God's people say, Alleluia and amen. We will continue with our call to worship. This is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Out of the doom of death and despair, victory comes, glory appears. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We shall live, witness, and recount the deeds of the God whose love endures forever. Hallelujah, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. We will continue with our order for confession and forgiveness. God, you call us to step out of the tombs that aim to consume us and more intentionally into the fullness of life that abounds in your presence. In stillness and in silence, let us acknowledge the ways we have been separated from the witness, from the richness of who you have called us to be. We admit that we have not always remembered the creative power of resurrection, the world where dreams We know that you can bring us back to life, O oh God, that you will meet us in the shadows and remind us that there are no limits to this life. With the fresh breath of the Holy Spirit, we are revived. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can turn towards the font for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen 
In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. And now in these days, you flood us with mercy. And our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, clean our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb, be glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. And God's people said, understanding, the love of Christ that guards our hearts, hearts and minds, and the joy and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood sets us free, the people of God. Power and riches, wisdom and strength, and honor and blessings and glory be to him. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Sing with us all the people of God and join in the hymn of creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might is to God of the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, this is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and living God, like a tomb's darkness that gives way to light, open us this day to newness of life. Open us to your love, to your acceptance, to your forgiveness, to your peace. Open us to one another and to the possibilities you have in store for us. Give us hope for the future and a passion for life here and now. We pray in the name of the one who destroyed death, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. Please be seated. We have come to the feast of the victory for our God. Christ is risen, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to worship this morning. Well, welcome to those online and here in the sanctuary with us. It's a blessing to be here today, not only to celebrate the victory for our God, but it's a blessing just to celebrate each other. Amen. Amen. Our announcements this morning are as follows. The service to celebrate the life of Mary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mary. <clears throat> the service to celebrate life of Mary Mendez will take place on Monday, April 18th. There will be a viewing from 10 to 10.30. 
The service will begin at 10.30 a.m. You are welcome to join us in the sanctuary or on Zoom. The Zoom link is below and in the weekly email sent on Saturdays. We want to continue offering Black History Moment once each month. So we need your help. Please, please contact Pastor Linda by email or phone if you're willing to offer a presentation. And even if you don't have an idea for a topic, Pastor will be happy to assist you. Our weekly Bible study will meet again on Wednesday, May 11th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We are using the book, She is Called Women of the Bible, to guide our study. It has been a very lively and informative study. Please plan to join us on May 11th. Please remember if you shop on Amazon, you can support our church with all of your qualifying purchases by using Amazon Smile. A portion of each purchase is donated to our church. Use this link for all of your purchases and help our church, and the link is attached here. That concludes my announcement, Pastor. Anything from you? I just want to take a moment to thank all those who contributed to uh, these beautiful Easter flowers that we have here. And if your name is listed in the bulletin as a contributor after worship, you are welcome to come and take a plant. And now for the weekly announcements. On Sunday, April the 17th, sorry. This is Resurrection Sunday. Uh, on Wednesday, April the 20th, at 7 o'clock in the morning, we have a devotion and prayer as we continue with our fasting. On Thursday, April the 21st, at 7 p.m., there will be um, music ministry in the sanctuary. And of course, next Sunday on the 24th, Second Sunday of Easter, we will have our 10 a.m. worship, and it's going to be a deacon's mass. That concludes my calendar of events for next week. Amen, amen, thank you. Yvonne. I see that we have some younger people here with us today, like younger than me. Can the little ones come up? Hey, Jenny. Hi. You want to have a seat? Don't be afraid. You want to sit down for me? Is that okay? So, I want you to reach in your bag. There's one egg in each bag. Can you reach in there and pull your egg out for me? Just the egg and don't open it. You can open it later. So you see, we have a lot of colors here, right? 
And these plastic Easter eggs come in all kinds of colors, don't they? I see purple and blue and yellow and pink and green. And when I look at the Easter eggs and all the beautiful colors, I think about Jesus. And here's what I think. That purple egg over there, hold it up. You know, purple is the color of royalty. And that purple egg helps me to remember that Jesus is the King of Kings. Can you say that with me? Jesus is the King of Kings. Nobody has an orange egg, but if you had one, and I'm sure there's some in the basket, orange reminds me of dirt or clay because Jesus came to earth to be human, just like all of us. And who has an orange egg? Oh, we have some additional. Hurry, hurry. Can you take a bag, please? Take a bag, take out your egg and hold it up. Here you go. So who has an orange egg, I mean, a pink egg? Pink. Pink reminds me of love. Because when you mix, mix pink and white, I mean red and white, it becomes pink. And Jesus, his blood and his purity mixed together make pink. And because of that blood, our sins are all washed away. So who has a green egg? Green, green, that's the color of grass. And you know what it reminds me of about Jesus? New life. Jesus gave us new life. And blue, who has a blue egg? Good. Blue makes me think about the sky and the air and all the effects that it has on us. We enjoy the cool breezes, right? And we can look up at the beautiful sky. And it reminds me that Jesus is always with us through the Holy Spirit. And lastly, we have yellow. Any yellow eggs? Hold it up high. Yellow is like the sunshine. And it reminds me that heaven is full of warmth and love for all of us because God is there and God promises us that if we love our neighbors as ourselves and try to live really, really good, even though it's so hard sometimes, that when we come to the end of our days, we will be with God just like Jesus. So can you remember all those things? And if you can't, it's fine. But just think about today is Easter and Jesus rose so that we could have eternal life. Okay? Pray with me for a minute. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all these young people who are with us. God, we ask that you would just continue to bless them as they grow, God, and help them and their parents to keep them in the way of the Lord. God, these and all things we live to you today and every day. Say amen. Thank you so much for coming up. Oh, here's your bag. You dropped your bag. Somebody left their bag. Who doesn't have one? Okay, you can come get it later.
Amen. It is good to have so many children in worship with us today. So please join me now as we bless our lector for today. Risen Christ, the early disciples witnessed your acts of loving kindness and your ministry of peace. As we hear your story anew, prepare our hearts to share the glory of Easter with the world. Janet, as you read the scriptures to us, may this powerful Easter story inspire us to preach peace, to comfort those who are weeping, to help those who are lost, and to proclaim our faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Got it. Good morning. First reading is from the books of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter's sermon delivered at the home of Cornelius, a Roman army officer, is a summary of the essential message of Christianity. Everyone who believes in Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection fulfill the words of the prophet, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, but both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judged of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. This is the day that the Lord has made Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sin and salvation echoes in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts violently. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punishes me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. 
I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone, but the Lord has been the, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. Paul describes the consequences of the resurrection, including the promise of new life in, in Christ to a world that has been in bondage to death. He celebrates the destruction of evil and the establishment of God's victorious rule over them. The reading. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For, for as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes to the end when he hands over the kingdom of God, the kingdom to God, the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Word of God, word of life. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, halle, halle. Beloved of God, I invite you to listen now to the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but they went in. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, Suddenly, two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their heads to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified? and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping, in, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This, beloved, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Thank you. 
and Savior, he's in the world today, and I know he's living, whatever me might say I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer and every time I need him, he's always near, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. I serve. And Savior, he's, he's in the world today. I know he is living, no matter what man may say. I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer and joy Jesus lives today. He, he walks with me. 
and he talks, he talks with me. All alone life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation. Ask me how I know that he lives. He lives. Oh, he lives. He, he lives within my heart. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Spirit is here with us today. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Risen indeed. Hallelujah. So in our lesson from Corinthians today, we heard Paul make a claim. He made a claim about the resurrection of Jesus that feels more true to me the older I get. If Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have all, and then those also who have died in Christ, they have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, then we are people most to be pitied. Well, those are some strong words from Paul. And now I can't speak for Paul, nor would I try to, but I can say that the resurrection of Christ is truly the heart of my faith. It is the foundation of all the hope that I have. It is the reason, the reason why I am a follower of Christ. Without the empty tomb, without the historic bodily return of Jesus to life over 2,000 years ago, I cannot, I cannot 
reconcile God's love and justice with the horrors that I see in the world around me every day. Death is too brutal and too terrible a violation. Evil is horrible. Injustice is too cruel and too widespread a reality. Humanity, though very, very beautiful, is also broken beyond description. Beloved, today I need the empty tomb. I need the promise of the resurrection. You've heard me say during Lent and during this Holy Week that I struggle with doubt. And I stand here before you today to say I even struggle with doubt today, but that does not lessen my faith. It's not easy to affirm resurrection in a world that is disenchanted a world that considers miracles embarrassing, a world that disdains belief in the afterlife, and a world that mocks things like angels and demons and prophets and saviors. It's not easy to affirm resurrection in a world that shies away from the mysteries that lie outside the purview of science. Beloved, that is the world that we live in so we struggle. We struggle to believe. And that's okay. Because God can take our unbelief. However, what comforts me is that in those first witnesses to the empty tomb, we hear that they also struggled. Our gospel reading describes us. These friends of Jesus stumble around in the half light on that third day after the crucifixion, running here and there in total confusion. An angel sitting at the unlit tomb, they wonder, is that really an angel? And that man who's wandering around outside is that really a gardener? And why does he look so familiar? It was early in the morning. It was still dark. And that is where Easter began over 2,000 years ago. And beloved, today it is still where Easter begins, in the dark, in the darkness of the tomb. So it helps me, and maybe it'll help you too, to remember that the music and the vestments and the lilies and the flowers and the processions and the hallelujahs, that all of those things came much, much later. They were not there that morning in that empty tomb. Easter actually began with fear and bewilderment as the shocking possibility of the resurrection collided with the grim lies of injustice and empire. The first disciples had to reach out with their imaginations to hold on to any kind of hope. They had to hope in the midst of their struggles, right there in the shadows on that Easter morning. So maybe the gospel accounts of the resurrection keep surviving our doubts because they ring so true to our human nature. In John's version of the resurrection story, we see individual people having very deep individual encounters with Christ. These encounters don't look the same. 
When Peter sees the empty tomb, he runs away. When Mary sees it, she weeps, but she stays and waits. And I have to believe that all of the, all of the disciples, no exceptions, that they all experienced Easter. Because, beloved, the resurrection met them and meets us right where we are. In other words, beloved, today we come to the empty tomb just simply as ourselves, for good or for ill. We don't get rid of our baggage before we get to that opening in the tomb. Our baggage goes right in there with us. And that's what shapes us. It shapes our perceptions and it shapes <clears throat> our conclusions. What matters most then, at least to me, is that encountering a risen Jesus in all the particulars of our lives is what really matters. Finding the empty tomb and finding in the empty tomb hope. The hope that we need to get us through our own struggles, our losses, our traumas, our disappointments. That's where Jesus meets us. And whatever universal claims have been made about followers of Christ, they have to begin in the rich and fertile ground of our own hearts, in our own stories. Whatever acclamations we cry out on this Easter money, they, on Easter Sunday, they must begin with a willingness to simply stay. Stay in that garden in the darkness, desolate and alone, listening, listening for Jesus to call our name. Listening for Jesus to reach out to us in love. Beloved, if any testimony we ever have is going to ring true, then it has to originate in the radical and intimate encounter with Jesus the Christ. So the question for today is, and most of you know, I always do have a question. Why should other people believe? That's not the question. The question, beloved, today is why do we believe? Why are we here today? Why is the resurrection of Jesus meaningful to you? What does the rising of Christ look like to you in your life? In John's account, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus for the first time and she chooses to remain in that holy darkness. She doesn't run away. She doesn't sugarcoat her despair. But she also doesn't go numb. She simply stays put in that place. And she lets her pain just deepen inside of her. She gives way to her grief. She gives in to her hopelessness and the agony of the circumstances that she believes are right before her. And unlike her counterparts, Mary refuses to abandon what is real, even though it's very unbearable. And so as I read this this week, I had to honor her story. I love the way her story honors her own sorrow. Honors her sorrow as a legitimate pathway to revelation. In our own lives, 
beloved, I find it to be true, at least in my life, that clarity and hope, they come to me when I'm willing to sit and linger in the hard places, in the deserted places, in the places where all of the usual platitudes fall flat and all the easy answers prove inadequate, Jesus reveals himself to me, beloved, in the shadows. And sometimes it really takes a long time to recognize that it's Jesus. Because Jesus doesn't always look the way I want him to or expect him to. Jesus doesn't let me cling to my old ideas of who Jesus is. As soon as I think I know when I grab out to get hold of Jesus, then he disappears. But if I listen, listen closely, I can hear him calling my name. That's where I recognize that it's Jesus. So in that way, I'm like Mary. But then there's Peter. Peter, who over these past few weeks, you have heard how much I love him. Peter, who runs recklessly into the tomb, and then he runs right back out again. Peter is impatient, and he's impetuous, and he's impulsive, and he just can't bear. He cannot bear to stay in that place where he expected to find his wounded Christ. So he runs. But as you heard the other night, I am grateful for Peter. I'm grateful for Peter being his authentic self. And I'm grateful for that because I have to admit, beloved, I probably would have run too. I would like to say that I wouldn't, but the truth is I probably would have. And maybe you would have too. Beloved, we need to know that when our doubts and our questions and our betrayals and our failures send us running for the door, the good news of Easter is going to find us anyway. The good news of Easter is going to continue to look for us. So maybe like me, you have been in these places too. You see, beloved, I have been in emotional landscapes that are so gloomy that I have lost my ability to even take the gospel in. There have been times when I have doubted my faith so seriously that I ran nearly to the point of collapse. Beloved, over my lifetime, I have missed so many angels that God has sent my way simply because I would not be still and listen. And even when I did, I didn't want to hear what they were saying, so I tried to quiet them. But my testimony today, beloved, is that the resurrection found me anyway. It found me and it claimed me. And the same can be true for you. So if you are a runner like me or like Peter, if you act first and then think about it later, if you go numb sometimes, if the good news mystifies and confuses you and sends you running for the door, then Easter is for you, beloved. It will always be for you. So if you need to run, go ahead. 
Easter is going to find you. Beloved, the remarkable thing about the resurrection is that it grows in us. It roots in us. Often it is only in hindsight, only as we look back at the grave sides of our own lives that we notice this rootedness. Only in hindsight that we find the same miracle that those early disciples found. Poet R.S. Thomas describes the process this way in a poem he titles The Answer. There have been times when after long on my knees in a cold chancel, a stone has rolled away from my mind and I have looked in and I have seen the old questions lie folded and placed by themselves like the piled grave clothes of the risen Christ. Beloved, the resurrection reminds me that our endings, no matter how bittersweet they may be, they are never final. New life does come. We can't stop it no matter how hard we try. Every change, every sorrow, every hope, and every farewell that we experience is held in the arms of the risen Christ. So like the first disciples, we might doubt and we might stumble and we might fall and we might run. But like the Christ of the empty tomb, we too, beloved, will rise. This is the promise of the resurrection. Happy Easter, beloved. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I can face to 
Amen. Please rise as you are able. We will now use the words of the Nicene Creed to profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Continue our service this morning with the prayers of intercession. <clears throat> On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Concluding each petition with the Easter response, Christ is risen indeed. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in building trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight and nourishing rain for the growth of plants and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Shelter in God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way, especially those we name here before you now prayers for healing and comfort are asked for joseph for willie for bill for barbara for julia pastor david and family for marilyn for sonia and family for chester for pastor richard for lee and pat for pastor cara Pastor Brenda, Medlin, Dorette, Pastor Katrina and family, Zanitha and Clement, Bernice, Bruce and Rita, Paul, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Emmy, Ernestine, 
and Glenn Wood. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. We offer memorial prayers this morning for Mary Mendez. For Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The gifts that we bring to this community compound and create resurrection power, helping us to awaken wholeness in the broken, strength in the weakened, and liberation for all living in the midst of injustice. Let us share our generosity with each other and the community as we raise our phones, our checks, our currency, whatever manner of giving you choose to do today, and let us pray together as we offer our gifts and our offerings. God of abundance, we offer these gifts to you in thanksgiving and joy for the presence of the living Christ. May these gifts bring new life to those both near and far. And may we offer ourselves in service to you and to one another. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord is with you. Lift up your voices to speak of this great love. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God. Time after time, you draw us here to inspire us, feed us, and save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here, steadfast and true. You created this world and called it good. You created us to proclaim your good to all. And so we raise our voices in praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and Sana in the highest. 
Beloved of God, we remember the life and ministry of Jesus, how he healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and preached forgiveness and peace. It was at this table that he issued the invitation to gather together, to share together, to remember together, and to go and do likewise in the world. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks for it, he broke it, and then he gave it to all who were present saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat of this bread, do this in remembrance of me. As was the custom after supper, he took the cup blessed it, gave thanks for it, and then gave it to all who were present saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And so on this day of resurrection, we pray, we raise our voices to proclaim this timeless truth. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us, your people, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make us lovers and tellers of your word. Make us healers and bestowers of your grace and make us one body in Jesus Christ. All glory and honor is yours, is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. As we are gathered, no matter where we are, here in this sanctuary or joining on the Zoom platform, we are gathered by the Holy Spirit as one. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have Let us all commune together. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you.
Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us all and keep us in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection so that through our lives, all may know life in Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Receive now the charge and the blessing. People of God, go forth from this time together and imitate the Holy One in all you do. Live with love, speak with kindness, touch with gentleness, walk with humbleness, and build up the kingdom of God. Go forth into the world and live in love, just as Christ has lived in and through you. And God's people said, Amen. We have seen the Lord today. Now go into the world and spread this good, this good news. God is good. And all the time, may you be blessed and may you be a blessing in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, how Jesus saved me from my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He launched me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angel singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet things I sing the song of Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior.
thank you so much for being here with us on this Resurrection Sunday. As always, it is my hope and my prayer that something said today, something sung today, or just by being in the presence of God and your brothers and sisters, that you have been lifted and given sustenance for your journey. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week and come back next Sunday. Amen. <laughs>